in the Mars Desert in America. Mars, the nearest planet to Earth that man could potentially inhabit. But what a challenge it would be, no air to breathe, no water, and huge extremes of hot and freezing cold. A barren landscape looks like Mars. It's actually the Utah desert. The spacesuits are semi-real too, as researchers here try to live just as they would if on a mission to Mars. Each time we uh, left the Martian facility, we had to wear spacesuits to go outside. Turning rocks into rocket fuel. But the hardest part personal space for extended periods of time was very interesting. There is a real plan to staff a mission to Mars within 20 years, maybe even 10. My God, the first time we arrived on Devon Island, we landed in this plane. The team was very small, we were just four people. And I was just completely taken aback by how Mars-like the whole landscape was. Especially when you're flying in, it looks just like a moon base. The land is desolate. We had to take seven flights to get here. It's a really tough undertaking, but it's extremely fascinating. This is a place that is barren. Vast, intimidating. You're rambling through areas that are quite dangerous. It's isolated and remote and rocky, just like the surface of Mars is. I think someday there will be humans walking on Mars, definitely. My guess is that the first people who land on Mars will say something to the effect, oh wow, this looks just like Devon Island, where we trained. Il gioco si chiama balle. Devon Island is the world's largest uninhabited island. It's cold, dry. I call this place Mars on Earth. We find exactly the same looking canyons, valleys, and gullies here. I am working on all things related to Mars uh, and Google, sort of bridging the two things. We have uh, an amazing team from Google. We are adding our base camp and our surroundings to Google Street View. We're going to be able to see it and welcome everybody to Mars. Questa non fa un cazzo, te lo dico io. I'm David North and I'm an engineer at the NASA Langley Research Center. I'm happy to be part of the science and research that will someday lead to a younger generation landing on Mars. Altitude 502. Okay. There's something on the other side of the hill yeah, there, yeah, too. Yeah, yeah. You see this green stuff over oh, yeah. here? It's very difficult to fly on Mars because the atmosphere is so thin. So the trick is to make your vehicle very light. And this vehicle is a vertical takeoff and landing vehicle. And the idea there is there are no prepared runways on Mars. So you have to land in such a way that you can land in rough terrain or or terrain that doesn't allow for rolling landings. Tipping over is definitely an issue for this aircraft. So there's one of the things we're learning about this aircraft is maybe the wheelbase needs to be a little bit bigger, particularly if it's a robotic aircraft and there's no one there to fly it. I bring my dog up here because we are in the Arctic. We're not at the top of the food chain. It's the polar bear that's at the top of the food chain. And so we have a dog here as part of our bear wildlife deterrent system. And not attack it, but distract. Okay, so today we're going to Astronaut Canyon. It's spectacular and it's really very similar in morphology to what we see on Mars. So the way you would explore Mars is driving your ATV wearing a spacesuit. And while you're riding, you're connected to your reserves so that they will recharge the oxygen tanks and the batteries in your backpack. 
Your ATV would be a self-driving robot that would follow you in your exploration on foot. This is why we're here. It has exactly the profile, the slopes, the topography, if you will, of some of the canyons we see on Mars. I am actually collecting seven to 10 panoramas to create a Voyager story. It's not just spending money to build a rocket and train people and build hardware and fly to Mars with the fuel. It's the fact that this will galvanize an entire new generation of people to go into science. Standing where no one has ever stood before. This is a place that pushes us to some limit. It's a perfect place to train for Mars because it's a lot more forgiving than Mars. You can make your mistakes here so that by the time you go to Mars, you, you won't. The winds are so strong. <laughs> you have to be always on the lookout. So it's a little weary. What we're gonna do with the rocks that we collect is to um, try to figure out what hit here. We still don't know if it was an asteroid or a comet. <laughs> And so what are you hoping to find? So we're, look, we're going to be looking for traces of an extraterrestrial signature. <laughs> oh my gosh, stunning. They're planetary geology or engineering. Studying space and astronomy opens up your mind, physics. So this is one of the first generation concept suits for Mars. To go to Mars, you have to have a good spacesuit. And right now, we do not have a spacesuit that is gonna be able to work on Mars. You cannot hop around with a spacesuit that heavy. And so part of what we're doing here is to find ways to reduce the mass of our future spacesuit for Mars. It's heavy, a little surreal. It really feels like you're somewhere else. I can't believe I'm wearing one. This is so close to making it happen. You <laughs> really want to go there. There's so many stories where Street Views encouraged or moved people or inspired people to do something extraordinary. And even if one person get more interested in studying other planets, I'll be really happy. I think when we think about going to other planets or colonizing them, we tend to think, why would you want to go there? It's cold, it's rough. Well, that's the same thing the people in the old world said 400 years ago. But maybe a thousand years from now, when people have colonized Mars, they'll think, well, this is normal. You know, this is, I live on Mars, so what?